Hello. Today, why am I talking so high pitched? I different that. Today, we're talking about the seven fears of leaders. Mark, seven. Yeah, it, it it for some reason everything sort of a lot of the good things revolve about sevens, don't they? I always remember was, the magnificent seven. You know, so I was thinking there's always seven summits, isn't there? Seven deadly sins, ah. you know. Uh, number seven is tends to be quite a popular number in football and other sports. There's more sins and, uh, in Weight Watchers, though. You're allowed. You're allowed at least ten, aren't you? Yeah, Every ten week. a night. You just you, you save them all up and have <laughs> twenty seven pints in a bag of crisps. Aye, I can only have the one cake. <laughs> it just happens to be this size. Have one, yeah. I can have one slice, but it's cake shaped. Yeah, nah. yeah. Oh, but you can have all the pasta way. you want, though, Mark. You can eat all the pasta you want. Yeah, yeah. Eat all the pasta you want, all the potatoes you want, as long as you don't but, put them in chip fat. Aye. <laughs> but you're not I was, yeah, I was I was doing a leadership group yesterday in London, and I did a little bit on um, seven fears of uh, leaders. And the title actually talks about um, seven leaders. The seven fears all leaders need to overcome, but I cross the word overcome out, and I, I talk about acknowledging because I don't think we ever overcome some of these fears. Um, mm. And the seven fears are number one is the fear of failure. Ooh. Yeah. Number two, fear of accountability, especially when Ooh. things go wrong. Bet yeah. it's on your shoulders now, isn't it? Yeah, mm. your it. The book stops with you. Mm -hmm. And uh, number three, fear of being seen as an imposter. Uh, uh. Yeah, I've had plenty no. of that. Yeah, yeah, we've had that. Yeah. Uh, and if I read it wrong, it seems like it looks like imposer, which is still me anyway. <laughs> Fear of being an imposer. <laughs> Number four, fear of criticism. Oh, I hate that one. Because you're just waiting for it, and you? you're just waiting for that criticism to come. That wasn't really a really good piece of work, was it, Mark? Oh, yeah, no, don't hit me. Well, that, that was generally when your question would come. So, so I've just designed this new thing that does this. What does it give you? Yeah. Shut up. I know. <laughs> Shut up, I know. it's cool. It's, it, Give me flashbacks now. I, know. I feel terrible. Number five, fear of making hard decisions. I used to love this because it's facing the brutal facts. You know, somebody's not performing. We need oh, to let them go. That, that's oh, just give them another couple of months. Give them another yeah. couple of months. Yeah, because that links into your accountability as well, doesn't it? Yeah. You're thinking, yeah. the worst is going to be my choice, and if it's the wrong one, and is there any We discussed that yesterday about, you know, People that have been in the organisation three months in the probationary and we know they're not really fit and the easy thing is to sign them off. That's the mm. easy thing to do. The, and we know they're not good enough and we sign them off anyway. And then yeah. two months later, the boss goes, why did you sign them off? You know. Like, mm. Yeah, yeah. Oh, we, we performance managed them out. We'll, yeah. We'll put them through the performance management. And HR signed them happening? off. Yeah, what ends up happening most of the time is you, you get them to sign a compromise agreement and you give them a few quid and tell them to go away. <laughs> Simply. Simples, isn't it? Yeah, simples. simples. No no, no, uh, no uh, lawyers involved. But just uh, That's the number. That's how much you get and you're leaving today. And by the way, you're leaving now. Yeah. It's like, I've You'll done a few with them in my time. Yeah. You'll be escorted out. I did it with it. I, w I won't say which company, but I had to do that to the HR manager. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, Beryl. Beryl. Poor Beryl. Beryl had been talking too much. <laughs> <laughs> she had told yeah. one too many people about one too many people's flus and doctor's visits and rashes. Yeah. All that. Do, you know, do you know Bob has got a rash on his balls? Mm, it's terrible. Mm. It smells as well. <laughs> <laughs> have, you, have you noticed how he sits funny? Yeah, and he fidgets. He sits and fidgets yeah. in his seat. Yeah, he's always scratching. Yeah. Have you noticed? Yeah. <laughs> and uh, number six is fear of taking risks. So we sit in our comfort zone and we don't 
uh, we don't really push the boundaries mm-hmm. of the department. Something that mm-hmm. you know you were you were always able to do it. It's always about pushing the boundaries. Yours, I, I like the fact that it was always calculated risks, whereas mine were just risk risks. And uh, <laughs> you were yeah, a little bit more flamboyant, weren't you? Yeah, yeah. I sort of recognise that now. That you know, there's risks, and then there's oof, you know, basically but, gambling. I but <laughs> I but the number of times it paid off though. So in terms of input into that feedback loop it was mm. more often positive than negative so you never learned to stop doing it because you're like yeah well more often than not i'm i've, I've got away with it <laughs> right, so. well i i saw it now now i, I keep I, i'll keep harping on for about it for the next few months but now i've had my diagnosis and i come up with an idea and like within five minutes i've gone four levels above the original idea and i'm like no we can yeah. make it much bigger and much brighter yeah you know yeah yeah and it's, and, and like anita will go I thought we were just doing this, and I go, ah, yeah, well, you know, well, I've just designed this whole corporation, right? <laughs> yeah, and and, 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 and that honestly, is... that was one of the things I I used to have to be really tight with you because I would I always use the analogy, Simon, this piece of this report you're going to create, can you just take us to the car park and not the moon? Um, <laughs> and I was doing it myself all the time. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. was going to the moon and back. You know? Yeah, but yeah, it's number seven is a is a is tough for some people, not for others. Is the fear of speaking out. So you know, mm. let's talk about an injustice. Uh, you were quite good with that. If you've, if you've got an injustice, you will have to speak out. Whereas I'd probably play the fence oh, a little bit. It eats, it eats though, it eats it is, and I have this yeah. really strong sense of justice. This. When something yeah. and my brain just won't let it go, so the all, all my only way of getting rid of it is, otherwise it'll just go round and round and round and round. I won't get it done. Right, go sort this out. The trick is though to take the emotion out of it and to try and put it across mm. in a way that's constructive and say, look, I need this sort of to try and wind yourself down a bit and go right. Rather than go this, this, he's a dick, and then that, and this has exploded, and this was rubbish, and you. Now nah, you need to rein it in and try and boil it down to what's actually wrong. That that's yeah. that was my challenge. Yeah. Taking the emotion yeah. out of it. I'm going to take a couple of bits from each one. So the first one is is fear of failure, um, and some people tend to set low goals because of the fear. So you know, in terms of stretching goals, they'll keep them safe yeah. um, because if we if we stretch them too much, we're in, we're in at risk of. Uh, not achieve them and therefore potentially as the word says failure um, mm. and, that, and then one of the other bits is um, if you've ever worked with a leader who has fear and it's quite visible fear is infectious and it's picked up by the team and they replicate that behaviour as well uh, they become Aye. fearful Aye, I've so, seen that I've seen that and, when it rubs off and, but we know the flip side of that if you are let's just, you know one of the others if you are good at taking risks then the team will feed off that and they will also take risks and which makes the leaps the team takes much much faster yet you've got to take the odd knock here and there but actually in terms in in the eyes of the business owners and that you know if you think about that department that you created the bi department and how that mm. was perceived very quickly in denmark it was just like exploded didn't it yeah. in terms of you know <clears throat> yeah how next next thing i know i'm regularly visiting I'm sitting with <clears throat> some managers that are up in the clouds somewhere. I'm like, how am I sat with that guy? Yeah. <laughs> sit, this guy knows who I am and he knows what I've done and he's asking me questions. Can we do this? Yeah. And can we do a bit of that? Oh, this is brilliant. I love this. How am I sat with him? And I'm having laughs and jokes with him. And he's like VP of Summit. I'm like, oof, what's going on there? Yeah. Did I? Yes, it's, credibility. You know, there was always, you know, I I used to love working with the finance department at our old place, mm. especially in, um, in in the northeast. And uh, uh, you know, when we were, they were failure in their eyes was like one piece missing from a stock take, and don't dare talk to me about them thirty odd pieces. Um, oh. And <laughs> but you know and i used to say to the to the sort of individual who was talking about failure because we were missing a few pieces in a stock take i said mm. i would say 
Well, that's easy. We, we can get 100% accuracy. And the individual will go, how, how can we get that, Mark? How, how, how can we achieve that? I see you close the doors and don't do business. What? <laughs> you actually said that to her, didn't you? I did, I did say that. You actually said it. Yeah. It's, just, it's right, though, because, because we're only human, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're handling, you're handling six million pieces a year in that mm. small little shed. Mm. And um, you, you are going to make a few mistakes. And, you know... <clears throat> You, and you're presuming, you're presuming it was counted in right in the first place as well as being yeah. picked out but right. And... As we worked out with all of these departments in Germany and UK, kill them with the numbers and they shut up. You know, Just <laughs> give them the stats. We're running at this ridiculous 99-point Lean Six Sigma number that I can't even quote now. And uh, mm. you should shut your face. You know, And guess what? We'll make a mistake tomorrow as well. But that's... Isn't that roughly what happened when when I first came on board in uh, in heaven? First stock take, I was there. <clears throat> I went a bit, I went a bit nuts with the documentation, mm. didn't yeah. I? I had everything, everything. I was running barcodes on everything. I had everything stacked, all the different counts separated out, with all the different bins separated out, so you could track exactly what had been counted when by who on what item. And in the end, we gave her this lovely shiny stack of i don't know well thought out stuff with cover pages everywhere and what everything was mm. there you go there's a nice big shiny thing for you look look at all the effort we've put in there Off yeah you pop. so fear of being accountable a couple of bits on that yep. some leaders will dodge accountability and blame others or delegate accountability down the chain that's terrible that so some people rather than taking a risk themselves they'll delegate the process down knowing there's a risk that that person could fail and then we blame them for it. Um, but the flip side to that, which we've just discussed, is when you accept accountability, great things can happen to the team and the organization. Mm -hmm. So you accept being accountable. Therefore, you also are the ones driving forward the, 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 the team, the operation, the rewards. So, you know, being accountable, some people have, have a fear of being accountable and just waiting for that knock on the door and say, you did something wrong. But we got in the stage like, oh, we do things wrong all the time. Don't worry about it. But these are the numbers, you know. Mm, and, and there's a, and that was there's, one of, isn't there a respect in having a, a leader that's willing to take that hit for you? Oh yeah, I, yeah. I'll take that. You crack yeah, on. Yeah, you know, it's I'll it's like it. <clears throat> I forget much what it is. Um, I think it's number four: fear of criticism. So if you're the coach of a team, uh, can you stand at the end of the game and say, "Well, it was them eleven, you know." <laughs> It was their fault. Uh, oh, who trained them? Who coached them over the last uh, six mm. months uh, for mm. this tournament? Uh, that yeah. would be you. Whose strategy you know? was it? Yeah. Who did all you the who, who did all the subs? Who chose yeah, you the start eleven? They were playing four four two, or you would decide that you know they were mm. they were doing this, and you know. Um, so you know, uh, uh, yeah. So you as a, as a coach, a trainer, a leader, a boss, you have to take responsibility and say. That's me. I'm I'm the one. Yeah, they they just did what I told them. So I'm the I'm the man. So blame anybody, blame me. Let them get on with their job. But yeah. So imposter syndrome. Um. Mm. Yeah. It, you you know we can be quiet in meetings, but we'll get found out. So we're, we'll have to we'll sort of have to contribute to, to a point. Um. And what ends ends up happening is because you know we're we're, we're reasonable at what we do. As the meeting's going on, we think, oh, I, I should say that. And we don't say it. And then somebody else says it and becomes the hero. So because we have this fear of imposter, and, and what's the worst thing wrong if you say something? Just somebody doesn't agree. That's all. That's all. Yeah. And that's, you know, so contribute. Uh, the, the good thing about imposter syndrome, as, as you get older, is you get experienced at your subject. You feel confident about your subject. You contribute more. Therefore, you feel less of an imposter. So that's number three. I'm flashing mm -hmm. through these because I know I'm sort of on the on the clock. Fear of criticism. Uh, well, the world is full of them. The world is full of critics. And if you want to listen to them, good luck with that. Because yeah. that'll just drag you down, you know. Yeah. And what we find it when we find with critics is either there's two camps really with critics. One is the constructive critic who is coming from a position of concern and trying mm -hmm. to help you. 
And then there's the critic that's just jealous of you because you got the position or you're doing this thing that they wanted to do and they just look, mm, yeah, like, you know, me, me, making millions of quid, you know, me, you know. But yeah, so mm. do, get get used to accepting, you know, fear of criticism because it's coming your way. Mm-hmm. Um, number five, uh, we've got fear of making hard decisions. Uh, I think the main thing on that is if you're making a decision with good intention um, and it doesn't come off, that's okay because you've made it with good intention. Uh, mm-hmm. And unfortunately, coming out of the woodwork will be that know-it-all that says, I knew that was going to happen. And you just, don't you love those people that come out of the word and say, I knew that was going to happen. Uh, oh, hold on. But before we started it, you never said anything. You know, you never, you never said, ah, you know, boom. Exactly. You 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 know you know I you know I participated in that, and mm-hmm. you know sometimes we 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 won't have all of the information. We'll have most of it, and you just have to go on what you've got. So make the decision based on what you've got with honourable intentions. And if it goes wrong, we're just learning from it, aren't we? Mm-hmm. So number six, six, fear of taking risks. Well, the fear of taking risks could be because we're trying to retain our position. And not put our head above. I can think of somebody that I've worked with, um, who is in another country, who keeps their head down and doesn't get, you know, um, does, doesn't uh, put their head above the precipice, and uh, maybe is hiding in a POS warehouse. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, so you know, if you if you if you try to, you know, hide, then that's maybe a good place to do it. Um, and if you're not taking risks, you're not going to improve the department, you're not going to drive for results. Uh, but at the same time, we're not trying to be reckless. You know, uh, I use the smart adjectives, uh, which is specific, measurable, uh, achievable, re- relative and, and time. So we're trying to take smart uh, risks in terms mm. of uh, fear of taking risks. So you got a bit of calculation on them, a bit of data, you'll be fine. And uh, the last one is... Uh, Fear of uh, fear of uh, speaking out, which is what we talked about at the beginning, and you you know you like to take a stand against injustice, things not right. Uh, we need to do better. Um, I was interesting. I was having a conversation yesterday with a with a team that there's a there's a um, uh, there's a reward system, and we we can sort of remember in our day we had a a reward system, uh, a bonus for the year. And I remember one January, we'd set the bonus scheme and uh, within a couple of weeks, the business changed very mm-hmm. dramatically, which meant it was going to be impossible for us to achieve the yeah. target. And I went to renegotiate and uh, I was politely told to get out of the office. <laughs> uh, but I was making a stand because I believed in terms of motivation for the rest of the year, we needed something, even if it was just a percentage to, to go at like a smaller percentage. But yeah. and, and taking that stance for injustice, uh, we have to do even if we're unsuccessful with it. Um, as you know, you know you mm-hmm. you you love fighting for the little man, don't you? Yeah, because I've been I've been that little man many times. So and yeah. it, I know what it's like when someone unexpectedly turns up and starts back in your your corner all of a sudden it can give you the push as well and you join yeah. in and you go yes yes i've got back up yes this is right that's right and it carries over that mm. confidence never yeah. truly goes away once once you've so got used to it it never truly goes away so yeah i like to step yeah. up and help them out why not yeah. it's what we it's what the rest of the planet should be like but it's so it's that not. was that was just a small proportion of what we were doing yesterday. I mean, I did uh, understanding fears as well, which might be a good subject in the future, how you can take a leap of faith against your fears to conquer them. Uh, that might be, That'd a, be a good nice one. Subject. That'd be a good one. That seems to be in the air at the minute when I've, I've been to different um, networking meetings and whatnot. They talk about, in talks, Yeah. they talk about conquering and identifying fears yeah, and leap naming of faith it. with leap. Yeah, naming it and leap of faith was one of the the phrases they use. So, yeah, it'd be good yeah. to do our own version of that. I like yeah. to do that. Yeah, mm. yeah. maybe next week. Aye. So that was yeah. So another short one there. We've got another one coming. Yeah, so we'll do a choose the Thursday thing going forward. 
Seems to be doing all right stats wise. Yeah. But uh, yeah, give us some uh, some likes, some subscribes, some follows, some comments. Click on things. Tell us more about what you like, dislike, and as we said last time, give us a question. Give us a question, and we'll do our best. <clears throat> I think it'll be one of the best challenges if uh, if you pick something, and we uh, and we have to just go with it. It'd be great. But until then, till the next episode. Take care.